What's up guys? What's going on? So uh you already seen the title or whatever, you know. We got some we're gonna change the wheels. The wheels for this turbo has finally come in from BBS. I've waited one year, two months, and uh today's the 16th. One year, two months, and five days for these wheels to finally show up from Germany. Special made uh, for the turbo fitment. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, so a lot of people, finally they came in. So a lot of people always do, you know, these unboxing and the unboxing is so amazing, especially for, you know, a set of BBS wheels. But uh, I'm gonna take it a little bit further for you guys. And instead of just unboxing, I'm actually headed to BBS headquarters, BBS of the United States, which is here in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, which is not too far from my home. And I'm gonna take you guys to BBS with me. Like this is super exciting to actually, you know, go to BBS headquarters and, you know, just see the facility, uh, meet Eric, which is super cool dude. Uh, you know, he works on the motorsport side. I've been communicating with him for like the past year. He's been updating me, you know, what's going on and stuff with the parts and everything. And, uh, you know, just check the whole place out. You know, this, this is exciting. So uh, let's take this ride. Let's head to the headquarters. It's about an hour from my house. And uh, I see BBS of, uh, of North America. <laughs> All right, guys, so finally reached BBS. It's really shocking that BBS is out in the middle of nowhere. There's only like three cars here in the, in the lot too, which is strange, but this is BBS. It was cows down the block. Let's go inside. Panels. Uh, let's go upstairs. Anybody home? Hey, what's going on? Hey, how you doing? I'm good, but what do you for you? I'm good, I'm good. My name is Al. Uh, I'm actually yeah. here for Eric. Uh, so oh, okay. we picking up some wheels? Yep, I can take you on this other way. All right, no problem. Where are you parked? Out here? Yeah, I'm parked right here. I don't know if should I go around to the motor ports? Yeah, up to the motor port side. Okay. Second drive yeah. Right there. All right. I don't know you're coming. No problem. Thank you. What's going on? Hey guys. So this is that, that's Eric over there. He's the man I've been communicating with. <laughs> and this is BBS. You heard you heard Eric. All the magic goes on in here. You got you know these all kind of three pieces. Everything over here is just lined up. This is uh, a candy shop here. <laughs> I mean, you know, this is BBS Motorsports side. Hey, Eric, how you doing? How are you? Just vlogging for my channel. <laughs> how are you? Your channel. Everybody's got a channel. Everyone's got a channel. Everybody's a producer. Now. I mean, listen, how often does someone come to BBS and to pick up wheels? <laughs> Too often. <laughs> Too often they come no, over here? They want to come. <laughs> Um, so anyway, your stuff uh, is right here. So these are the regular BBS's silver guys, but I went a little bit extra and went with the gold faces. Woo, it's so gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and <laughs> I see, I see. Those are all faces right there that they have down. And I mean, you know, if you're expecting wheels, they're coming. Uh, Eric is working real hard in here to put them together and uh, really, uh, you know, get you your wheels. I waited a year, a year, two months, <laughs> and it's some days. You know, they're just as they're produced. Yeah. So what prepping 
entails is basically prepping all the gasket surfaces, right? Making sure they're all good. I've got to do the decals, the valve stems, load, load them with hardware. If you want to look in here, you'll see, you know, that's what prepped is, right? Okay. So, so all of so these- So it's ready to be put together so All of these are prepped and yours were right here yesterday. All so right. Then it's a matter of about 15 minutes. You can, you know, assemble them. Yeah. Pre-prep. And you assemble them pretty fast. Yeah, I can do, I can do a wheel in about three minutes. Oh man! You well, know, I took apart my. Uh, if it's prepped, yeah. If it's not if it's not prepped, if it's just starting from scratch, and I have to select the parts and because I also go through like even all those rims over there. Yeah, I'm sure. Oh okay. man! So all of those, like say the ones close to the windows, those are 19 by one. Yeah. So if you need a 19 by one. I don't just grab it, I'll make sure there's, you know, there's nothing wrong. Yeah, of course, of course. There's something wrong with every one. But, <laughs> like yeah. mine had to be drilled can, out well, for the TPMS. Well, I can take my time and kind of make sure you get a, you know. Um, all right. And then I can prep them and get them all ready. And, it, and I take a, you know, a little while to prep them in, in my spare time. Yeah. And then when the stuff comes in, I can very easily do it and, you know, get it out of here. So yeah. I just built uh, the other two this morning while I'm sticking around. Well, so, you build them pretty quick. A lot quicker than I uh, could build a three-piece. Well, yeah, <laughs> You've been doing it long enough. I do it all, all the time. How long have you been building these? Or work for BBS? I, uh, two days ago was my 15th anniversary. Wow. <laughs> and I build the vast majority of all of them. I handle most of these orders. But wow. I was, uh, I've been in the industry my whole life. I've done everything. I yeah. I build racing engines and cylinder head development and fuel systems and I've done all that. And then um, I knew who BBS was, so I just stopped by one day and I handed my resume to the then, the guy who was running motorsport at yeah. the time. And then he called me a couple months later. And, and you think it's very, very simple, it's but no. easy, it's a wheel, but it's like if you stare at a rock long enough, if you really stare at it long enough and look into it, yeah. it's not as, it's not not that simple. simple. So, oh, I learned that the hard way one time when I put one of my wheels together. And I realized two days later one was flat. I was like, oh, I think I might have not sealed this one well, probably. That, that can happen, but that's why, in other words, all the, all the procedures that we use here. Yeah. From how we go about prepping the gasket surfaces and how we assemble them and how we categorize everything was we developed in-house. Okay. Uh, the, the torque spec of the bowl, the everything we do a little different than even let's say bbs in germany does oh so okay we there's a lot of actual effort and time that goes into building them where you know they may just take some of course they're not they're not shipping them anywhere yeah so they have to be flown here and they're in stacks you know they're just in boxes like just this. come raw stacks. like this so so you know you have things can happen during that transport but every single thing is inspected and prepped before it's assembled. Yeah. So, I don't really have any. <laughs> so these are ready to go out too to a customer. These are also going out. Yeah. These are going out, and then these other, these other six and a half are also ready to go. But there's going to be a change made with one of those two over there. Okay. These four will probably go out next week. Uh, over here, there's four sets plus some centers going out to another dealer of ours. There's four here that are leaving today on a skid to go out. And all those are NASCAR wheels. Oh, all right. All of NASCAR. Well, NASCAR get the good stuff. You see that, guys? They get the good stuff. <laughs> uh, they're, they're, it's just a different deal. That's a die forged one piece wheel. Yeah. Uh, a lot of them don't ever come here. A lot of them go directly to a company called Champion in North Carolina that does all the logistics for them. Okay, yeah, 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 no but Champion. the ones that do come here need to be, um, basically you have to inspect them, serial number them, install a special valve stem, and then... Talking about valve stems... There's a, there's a lot of, you know, a little nonsense. I actually bought, uh, I actually bought mine. I mean, it's this is what you was talking about, just standard, right? Right. Right. Okay. So, in other words, when you see when you see any of our any of our rims that we do, like you can see an 18, they have a, they have a small hole in them, like 
Oh yeah, that is pretty tiny. It's 18 meters. Anything that's under three inches wide will get this small eight millimeter hole. Now this being an 18, you cannot open this to this size. Okay? Oh. There's no room to do so. Once you hit a three inch wide or whatever, they go to the standard hole size. Okay. And they do the same, they carry that practice over into the 19s as well. If it's under three inches wide, it gets a small hole in it. Mm. But the 19s have room to be drilled to out. To be opened. And the other thing is, this is a very, the way that they do these is like a very cottage industry. It's a lot of hand involvement. So these holes here, even though they were drilled at the factory, okay. they're hand drilled. So you might see they're not perfectly centered between the bolts or they're not the same up and down. Yeah. So when you're selecting a one inch outer like this and you're going to open that hole up, you don't oh, so want- so that one had to be opened up. Yeah, I opened these, these bottom ones. Okay. So that's part of selecting the rim. How off center is the original hole? And, and, you know, I can move it when I drill it by hand, but I can only move it so far. Okay. So I drill these. So now when this when this will go in, in other words, if we take this here, we'll just let's say put it in there, because you don't you know you don't want to be too close to either one of the radiuses, right? Okay. All this little stuff. So this will go right in. Okay and you're not hanging on a radius or anything like that. You're, mm, you're it's, pretty it's flat. well, you're pretty well, you're right. It's going to sit, sit the right way. But right. some of the rims, it's in just fact, too some close. of the, some of the 18s they sent us recently, they're, they're very close to the radius. So when we used to get, you know, we used to do pretty much all of the IMSA teams and the Grand Am teams, mm -hmm. and some of the better teams like Ganassi and stuff, they were very critical of every little minute detail, even that, because they had to run their own sensors and everybody had a different sensor. And it, yeah. Uh, so, you know, although these look great, they're beautiful, but if you look, okay, you can look in here, see? When Klaus or whoever it was was prepping for the paint yeah. and deburring it, uh. okay? These are race parts. Yeah. They are not, they're not even painted to the same standard as a road wheel. The paint on here is a courtesy. Yeah. Because they, they it's usually, going they, to get the wrong? crap beat out of it. That's what's made for. The polishing is a courtesy. Mm. Okay. This is not like, hey, everything's going to be perfect. And we, uh, people buy these wheels for a number of different reasons. One is they just have to have that wheel. It's the real race E88. <laughs> That's what they want. Yeah. But the other one is maybe they have an oddball fitment and it's easy to achieve with this three piece wheel because we have hundreds of different centers and rim halves and half inch increments. Yeah. And that, you know, those are the main reasons, but they are not a street wheel in any sense of the word. Yeah. When you make when you make a one-piece wheel, or you're des we design a wheel that we know is going on a street application, and we know it's going on a car of a certain weight with a certain type of suspension and weight distribution and aero loads or whatever it is, yeah. and it's going to be on the street, every little aspect of the wheel can be altered, especially in the inner rim, which carries most of the load, okay? So mm. they may take that inner rim on that wheel, and they may put more material in certain areas and things. We don't have that opportunity with these. Oh, these no. are modular wheels. These rim halves are made for a racetrack. Smooth. Okay, yeah, they jump curbs and stuff, but there's not potholes. Yeah. And yeah. this rim is made one way. I don't have I don't have different series of rims. This is the same rim over you use over. on any race application, okay? It's the same. It's made the way it's made. And this rim being a modular rim and being in a stack or on a pole mm -hmm. post, we, at the outset of the design, it's not known where it's going to go. Is it going to go on the back of a Porsche? Is it going to go on the front of a BMW? You don't know. So and would you would you say that this is more like susceptible to 
damage on well, a street, like it's not, regular street Right, right it's not made for, let's say, potholes, right? Okay. Now, on the flip side, this wheel can be repaired, not straightened, but you but can repaired. take it apart, replace just the damaged component. Okay. And that's why it was, that's what it's designed for in the race application. Yeah. That's why in a race application, if you're racing on your own dime, it's about the optimum product to be on because it can be altered, it can be changed around for testing. We could try different widths to how the tire reacts. Uh, a lot of these centers what I, yeah, are I was just about to, to say, other applications. What I'm noticing is that the centers look like they could be altered for different uh, well, bolt patterns. Well, what this is, pretty much all the Porsche that we do, even though it's a five lug, okay, mm -hmm. it also is configured to be run as a center lock with the cup car. That's what I was just noticing. 997 cup cars used what it's called a spring plate, but there's really no spring to it. But it, it just screws on and it's a plate and that's what the center lock nut mm -hmm. loads against to hold the wheel on the car. So whenever you do a, a, a center lock wheel, at least when we do it, yeah. There's there's five pins, but there's three sets of holes. Okay, okay so, so you can get more use out of the wheel. Now, one of the sets of holes is doubles as the lug holes. Yeah. But if you have the drive pins, that's a set of holes. That's a set of holes. That's a set of holes. So and basically, so I could if I convert it to a center lock on my car, I could run the same wheel. Yes, but you wouldn't want to run that center lock on your car because that's a race center lock with very little safety margin to it. Oh, okay. When Porsche designed their street center locks, mm -hmm. which I have a set of those here, it's vastly different. Oh, okay, street okay. center lock is now, there's all different ways you can yeah, do a center like lock. Yeah, this is like counter something. Well, not only that, you can do a taper, you can do flat like that, but this, when they designed this, it was made for a street application. There's a locking mechanism. Okay. It's a vastly different animal than that. Than that so when you take and or you make a, you do like a center lock adapter deal, mm -hmm. it's not, it's not it's ideal not the way you do it. For this. No, no. Okay. So you could have center locks of all different types. If, I, if we walk around here, you could see like, Like, um, let's say, you know, this center is for a Group C Aston Martin. It's got one type yeah, of center and that's lock. A huge this is a Porsche 935. It's got another lock. type of center lock. Okay. Uh, this one, you can see the seat width is different on that. The angles are all different. Yep. Everything's different with how each chassis manufacturer did it. This type, that Oh, yeah, that so one is... Huge. So what you have to keep in mind is—is is this how this come, or this is like no, that's you got refurbishing that? No, one. no, that's how it came. We don't make them anymore. That's called an E19. That's cast magnesium. Wow. <laughs> but like we do stuff for 962 Porsches a lot, 935s. These are BMW CSL centers. Oh. But they're nice. all at, those actually use a 935 nut. But um, you know, there's there's a million different ways to skin a cat, right? Yeah. But when you're looking at a center lock. Again, it's more, it looks very simple, but it's not. Mm. Okay, here you go again. We've got multiple sets of holes. Okay. You have the back of the center is not flat. Okay. Okay, it's very slightly concave. So it touches the outer first. Oh, wow. So it touches the outer first, just as the center lock nut if you have, let's say, a 60 degree nut included angle, mm -hmm. this will be like 59 or 59 and a half or whatever. To like clamp better. So what happens is just like a valve seat will kind of touch more towards the upper or the outside. Mm -hmm. So when you're tightening this and it contacts the upper outer edge or the outer third first, okay. and the back of it contacts the outermost edge first, as you tighten it, it slightly deforms and acts like, a, whoops, acts like a spring and holds it on the car. Oh, okay. So it's not just like, oh, I made the nut tight. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's actually friction there holding it. Well, there, there's a, there's the tensile strength or the compressive strength of the material that also holds. 
again, that's why I say it's not like everything looks very simple. Yeah, but and they almost really seem the same too. Like even this one, this is vastly different. This one has slots. Oh yeah. That one had spring-loaded pins. Uh, there's all kinds of different ways to do things. But when okay. they do the Porsche ones, the Porsche centers, in just about every case, like here's a center lock only cup car replacement type center, okay? This is center lock only, uses the bolt on plate with the stub axle. Now you can see again, it's got, it's got two sets of drive pin holes. So now this one looked a little bit similar to- A little uh, bit, but since it doesn't have the lug holes, since it doesn't have the lug holes, instead of having three sets of drive pin holes, mm -hmm. it's got two. It's 10 spokes, so they focused the drive pin on the spoke. Okay. But what that allowed them to do is to more deeply scallop the sc spoke to take a little weight out of it. Yeah. Where you're doing the combo and you have to allow room in the front for the counter bore for where the lug nut goes. And when Makes you sense. look at that, and when you even look at that one, if you take a look at one of those like this, this is kind of like yours, okay? This is basically, it's the same thing. It's still, it's still the same pattern, but it has three sets of holes. And the reason is that you notice they're not evenly spaced. Yeah, the lug yeah, yeah. bores are on the spoke, to. right? And these are kind of closer together, not on the spoke. So that means they couldn't scallop quite as deeply. And also, because you have this on this side, mm -hmm. if you feel here, you'll feel it's bumped. Yeah, it's pretty. It, oh yeah, yeah, that? right, yeah, right there. So they they took out, and then they had to leave a little, a little bit then, in. So they kind of optimized Jumped every up. single application. So okay. every one is different. Right. But when you look at this. 0288120. Yeah. Okay. 02 means it's a wheel center. 88 means it's an E88. Okay. 120 is the drawing number. So they started at 100. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we're up to like high 600s. So there's hundreds of different centers. Now with Porsche oh. application like yourself, there's four centers. And this is maybe this five is to cover face, right? Yeah, this is the 88. Oh. So. I this is a 120 this. that would be used on like the front of a 996 GT3. Okay. There's really like, on your application, you're, you've got a 274, and then the sister to that and the same offset family would be a 108. When I say offset family, I mean, because the hub difference is about a half inch different between the two. Mm -hmm. It's mainly a break room thing, okay. but they're in the same offset family. In other words, if the 274 makes, a, I spout this off because I live it every day. Yeah. It's just, you know. It but becomes second nature. But it's different, you know, everything's different. These are like, these are a build for, this is a Mercedes Center that's actually being used on a new Supra. Nice. Because they, Pretty much everybody's going to like a standardized a 112 pattern, which Mercedes started with. Yeah. You know, in the old days, or even still, Porsches are 130, those are 112, Audi is 112, or, you know, Volkswagen's 112 or 100, and then you have BMW's 120. And 120. It's like <laughs> stupid, really, if you think about it. But you know, it. they're trying to stay exclusive for some reason. Well, it simplifies it, right? <laughs> so that's basically the deal. But, all right, um, all right. But anyway, getting back to this, you know, this, this being a modular part, we're not going to make, let's say, a heavier duty street version of it. Yeah. We don't. It, it's not, it's not, it's intention. It it's a race sense. part. Now, that being said, all of these things that are being built, we know they're not all going on race cars. Yeah. And I really do not get, you know, people calling saying, oh, I bet my rim or I crap. I get maybe one every two or three years usually in 19. well i mean when you spend better, so much money rubber, for a you know. rim uh you kind of drive differently <laughs> yeah yeah you know and they're basically toys yeah but their exactly. main thing is they're attracting they're attracting yeah um but if you have a i don't have the 88s on my cars no <laughs> i don't i have rsgts and then I have uh, on the Lebowski out there, I've got some, I don't know what they are. 
<laughs> cast or something. Uh, All right. Uh, you know, street wheels on street cars, race wheels on race, race cars. cars. But. All right, guys. So uh, I'm finally back home. As you can see, obviously I'm in my garage. But uh, man, uh, these things are gorgeous. They're gorgeous. They look even better in person, to be honest with you. Um, Eric was amazing. Uh, as you guys uh, saw, he gave me a full tour of the entire BBS of North America uh, facility. Um, you know, he just went into a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, you guys just got a snippet, but I was there for probably an hour, you know, just going over so much with him. I mean, I know more about BBS now than probably BBS corporate knows <laughs> at this point. Some things I can tell you guys, some things I can't tell you guys, as a matter of fact. That's how much information that Eric just filled me in and filled me in on, but he's amazing. I was actually communicating with him for um, probably after the, the past eight months, I was communicating with him versus the actual company that I went through to uh, purchase the wheels because he's just been so transparent and beyond helpful and just easing that eagerness of, you know, I'm waiting, uh, you know, one month, I mean, one year, two months, you know, five days for a set of wheels. And he just always had the right answers and stuff. But, uh, yeah, man, I mean, I can't wait to get these things on the car. Um, they're beautiful, you know, they're just gorgeous. And um, hope you guys... Hope you guys appreciate them. Uh, you know, most people do a regular unboxing, but I bought, I went and just got these straight from the factory. They weren't even in boxes. Eric actually just packaged up the other two for me in the box because I didn't want to put them in the bed of my truck. But uh, I don't know. I'm just super stoked that I finally got them. They're super light. Like these rims are so light, beyond light. I mean, I don't understand. Why so light? But hey, they're actually lighter than the, the M3 rims. But uh, feels good. Feels good. Uh, you know, let me know what you guys think. BBS E88s uh, on a 911 Turbo. I got red going on top of gold, which, I mean, if you guys know this combination, please, you know, let me know. But there's not too many people that got gold motorsport wheels on, you know, a red turbo. So, uh, that's it, guys. That's all I got for you. Hope you enjoyed this video and, uh, you know, catch you guys on the next one. Stay tuned, you know, for when it actually does go on the car. You know, like, subscribe to this uh, channel. Got all kind of things going on over here. So peace, guys. Thanks.